Get the popcorn, Frank. Coming, dear. Okay, it's not the best picture, everyone. I know it's of a toilet, but it's for a reason. So let's take the resident bathroom here. Does anyone see any difference with this bathroom, maybe from your bathrooms at home? Anything that stands out? Good, excellent. I wish I had prizes or something. I'd throw it on over. Yes, you're absolutely right. The color of the toilet seat. Does anyone know why? It gives them a cue that that's where they should. Exactly. It's just that extra, it's just that extra cue for them to see that that is a toilet. It's so important because the, of the color contrast. Now, it's not very loud. The backsplash is also that pretty blue color. But it just, it helps our residents. What we are about is we want to make those connections for our residents so they don't have to do that. And I don't say that to be rude. It's just because we, we want them to succeed. If a resident is in a position where they, they cannot make that connection, you can see them struggling. You can see our residents not understanding a situation, not understanding the queuing. Maybe if they went to this restroom and it wasn't, two different colors, they wouldn't be successful. It's these little things that we have to think about to make those connections for our residents. If we do that, they won't feel that as anxious as they would have if they were in a situation where they weren't understanding. We are with residents that are early to middle stage. What that means, it's a really difficult stage. Those stages are the stages where our residents know that they are forgetting. They know that something's not right with me. They know that this isn't the home that I might have grown up in, or where are, my, where are my sons, where are my daughters, why am I here? Unfortunately, these are the stages for a resident that really, they do know that something is going on. Why? Why am I here? So what we have to do is we have to make those connections for our residents and we have to show in our care. We really have to show that this can be home for them. So when I say home, like I said, doing the laundry, taking your dog out. In fact, speaking of dogs, I bring in my own dog every day. Her did <laughs> I did. I did. I should have brought Olive. Um, she's a sweetheart. But I bring her every day. Why? Because we grow up with dogs. We have cats. We have some cats in the building, actually, that our residents have. But it's important. That's normal life. Taking the dog out for a walk, feeding the dog, you know, even bringing it out for, to go to the bathroom, that's normal life. And our residents can do that. That's what I need to drive home with everyone. I need this to feel like home, and I need our community to know that this can be an extension of home for your loved one, for your friend, for whomever. This is success. Take this second picture over here, the queuing signage. Now, I'm not a big fan of a sign of a toilet, but it works. If you have those restrooms, even at home, if you're, you are caring for a loved one, put a sign on that bathroom door because it just cues our residents that that is a bathroom. It sounds little, it sounds small, but it is very important. You can do that with other spaces in your homes or here in the Vita neighborhood. If there is a need, if a resident cannot find something, this simple little sign of a toilet can work wonders. This is our brain gym. Now, we want to create a space where our residents are continuing, continuing to use their abilities that they still have. It's habilitation therapy. We're not looking to rehabilitate. Our abilities can't be retaught to our residents. However, the abilities that our residents still have, if we continue to exercise those abilities, they won't lose them as quick. If they're not talking, if they're not socializing, if they're not going to listening their, to their favorite music, or doing their laundry or doing the things that are important that they still have the ability to do, then they're going to lose it. It's just how the saying goes. If you don't use it, you lose it. So just take, for instance, the Brain Gym. It's a touchscreen monitor, which is user-friendly. And because of our staffing on Avita, 
we have staff that can sit right there with the resident and use that as an education tool or just to connect with family at home through the Skype or I think Apple does a program. I talked to my mom through it, so I, I know. But um, it's really successful. It's just that little extra connection for our residents to, to continue to work their minds. Secure and safe patio. This is a wonderful thing. I haven't always been so lucky to work in a community where we've had this. So this is a safe and secure space for our residents. So our residents can come and go as they please to the outdoors without a staff member being right there next to them. And I don't say that to be rude, but let's be honest, we all enjoy our own time. We all enjoy our own space. Maybe we want to listen to music on our own, just, just maybe just meditate or just sit in peace and quiet. So our residents can utilize this space on their own. Um, it's beautiful. They can see all the seasons. They can go out if it rains. These doors are open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And you might be a little nervous when you hear that because snow happens and rain and thunderstorms. Well, that's real life, and our residents should be able to experience that. But what's great with this neighborhood is that we do our hourly checks. Our aides and myself, we, we check on our residents to make sure that they, everything is all right, everyone is accounted for, and everyone's safe. But this is a space that is really important to our residents here. And it ends with this is our home. This, this is actually one of our residents and one of our aides. This is what we want to create here. I didn't make, I did not make them do that. That's, that was on their own. And me, with my camera phone, I snapped a picture because I was walking behind them. When you see something like this, you've know, you know you've made a success. You know a program is working when this happens on its own between staff and resident. This is family. So that's just a little bit, a little bit about what the VITA program is about and what memory care in an assisted living really should be. Whether it's here or somewhere else, memory care in an assisted living needs to be an extension of home. And if we could be your home, well, then great. <laughs> Thank you. That was terrific. Thank you very much. So that's that's. That's all about the wins. And by the way, they're going to be available also for questions at the end. That's all about the wins. Is it, is it, is, and, and I think you could see by listening to them, by the way, this is an ad for them, why it is important to think about when you're in this situation, getting a geriatric care manager to talk to you to help you think through that. Because there were just a lot of, there were a lot of great questions to be asked as you're out shopping. And I think one of the points that, that, that Deb made, which I think is really crucial, is the best time to do all of this is when it's not an emergency. The best time to do this kind of shopping, especially in your neighborhood, in the communities that are immediately around you, um, is when you're not absolutely ready to go or you're not just coming out of the hospital because somebody had, a, had, a, had an incident and they're in the hospital. We've seen this happen. I've seen this happen with clients. Someone has a, an issue, goes to the hospital, the hospital they don't want you to stay in the hospital, right? We all know that. So they're trying to get you discharged. And where they, they just want to get you discharged. And so, and the people who are going to be pushing as to where they're going to go is going to be a nursing home. The nursing homes are actually going to be there trying to work with the social, the social service people in the hospital to get you discharged to the nursing home. That may not be where you want to be, right? But, but, when, but if you understand that there are these other options available to you, you may, you may be able to use them while, you know, in order to get discharged to the right place. So that part's really important. So now I'm just going to talk a little bit about money. So what if you've gone through all of this and, and it turns out that it, it really is time, um, or at least it would be time if there were enough money around. But the question is, if you're Frank and Mary uh, and you've got these assets, you've got a house that's worth about $600,000 and Frank's got an IRA worth about $200,000 and They've got an annuity and some bank accounts, so they've got about $950,000 in all. And Frank's got income from Social Security and a pension of about $2,000 a month. And Mary's got uh, Social Security coming in of about $1,000, so they've got income of about $3,000 a month. They've been living fine at home, and they have some cash reserves, but they're 80 years old, and they're saying to themselves, so if I go to assisted living, remember the, one of the questions I raised from the beginning, I don't want to run out of money before I'm dead. Right? That's a bad idea. And that's, you know, and you know, that's, people worry about that all the time. All, as you get older, 
you know your income is not going to be, there's no new money coming in, so it's got to last. So the question is, does this work? Well, a couple of things. First of all, if you do decide to go to assisted living, um, because you've got, you or your, or, your, or your partner has got deteriorating health, one of the things in the back of your mind that you are worried about is nursing homes because you know friends who have gone and you know people who have gotten wiped out. So what are those issues? Very briefly, very briefly, you need to understand if you're Frank and Mary, that if Mary, is Mary's health deteriorates and she needs to go to a nursing home tomorrow, even given the assets they have, they can qualify for mass health. Mary can qualify for mass health. And the reason for that is that for, I mean, mass health is the one government program that will pay for nursing home care. The reason for that is that to qualify for mass health, while Mary would have to have less than $2,000 in countable assets, Frank can own the house as long as the house has an equity of less than $814,000. This was my fault that it was supposed to go like this. You can have a house as long as it's got equity of less than $814,000. Frank can have cash or cash equivalent assets like that IRA or the annuity or whatever of $117,240. But most importantly, he can have infinite income. 